Hey guys, Blex here. I'm bringing you a new video this time. I'm showcasing a macro and a couple workbooks I've built in order to make an efficient team within DraftKings. So this will actually pull raw data from DraftKings and create an efficient lineup as well as pull statistics from Baseball Reference to give some context to this player selected. So where I'd start with this process is I go to DraftKings and this is the typical contest window. I go in and export the data. Next, we have this data. I already exported it, so it's over in this tab to the right. This is what you typically get as an output. Now, this is where you go to my first work workbook sheet. I'd go in and I'd copy that exported data into these tabs right here. As you can see, it matches up com entirely with what you get from uh, DraftKings itself. And I have a series of macros that'll go in and clean this data because the data we get is kind of messy. We have, you know, pitchers and catchers and uh, it's like first baseman, third baseman. We want to separate this out so Todd Frazier shows up as two separate lines. One as a first baseman and one as a third baseman. That way we can properly um, calculate where he's most efficient if we select him as a player. So I'd go through and strip this out. As you can see, everything's a single line. I also unify the naming convention for pitchers. As well as I have to manually go out and strip pitchers from the list. So if the pitcher's not pitching, so we only have like these pitchers, I'd go in and strip out everyone else. I haven't developed a way to efficiently do that um, with the macro yet, and it doesn't take that much time either. I just go through and, you know, tick mark the guys who are going to be pitching tonight and then just delete everyone else out. From here, in order to get the statistics for each player, I go through and copy the names in this column, and then go to my converter tab and paste them in this names column. And what this will do is it converts it into an ID that Baseball Reference uses to get stats. So I have a database that I pull uh, previously pulled names from and then I also have a naming convention generator that will also do that. So I'll get this list of, of names and I'll go over to a new sheet. I have one for pitchers, one for hitters and this will pull data from Baseball Reference and why I do this is because it gives you more context to, to what they're doing and it aggregates all the data in one page. So this is actually something I'm very proud of. It took a little while to develop, but I can run a macro that'll aggregate all the pitcher data for the pitchers I selected into one sheet. As you can see, it goes out and it pulls each player's data into a workbook and then aggregates it into this top page. So I get games played, or yeah, games played, average, variance, standard deviation, and then STD plus one, STD minus one. And I'm pulling this data from baseball reference. I'm cleaning it up a lot. And then I'm also going into the DraftKings tab, DraftKings column, I'm sorry. And this is where I'm getting my averages and variances and standard deviations. So I take this pulled down data and go back to my old tab, or old workbook, I should say, and I'll do a data dump. So I just pull all the pulled data into this table right here. And the reason I do that is because my other tab has a VLOOKUP in place that pulls all that data. And the solver function in Excel is perfect for creating an efficient team. So we know that my salary needs to be under a certain threshold, 50,000. So we have that in here. We all want to have the highest average points possible. That's in here. And we also know we need two pitchers, one catcher, and so on and so forth. So I built the solver to do that. And let's run the solver here. It's going to create the most efficient team based on this data. Oh, it's the same one. I already ran it. So it's the same group of guys. But as you can see here, I'm pulling the standard deviation plus one. The reason I did this is because um, for contests that are more all or nothing, those you know win a million dollars in first place, you want more variance. So I figured standard deviation plus one is more representative of players who have a higher ceiling, and that's what I'm really going for. If I was doing a 50-50 game, maybe I'd go for standard deviation plus one, or just go for average, and then kind of pull out people who have a high variance. Yeah, this is uh, my macro, guys, and let me know what you think, and uh, I'll be happy to talk more about it if you're interested. Thank you.